is already a matter of life or death for many people in countries across the world right now. It's not just isolated, drowning islands in faraway oceans, but whole towns like Paradise in California, where recently at least 85 people died, many burned in their cars, fleeing the wildfires that destroyed their whole town. And we're at a critical point. Average global temperatures have increased by a degree Celsius since pre-industrial times. That's as a direct result of our use of fossil fuels and our carbon emissions. This degree of warming is seeing worrying rates of Arctic sea ice shrinkage, accelerated sea level rises, and more frequent extreme weather events. We probably all remember the frightening hurricanes that swept across the Caribbean last year, where thousands of people died and thousands more people lost everything. Not just one hurricane, but almost a whole alphabet of them. Hurricanes Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Don, Emily, Franklin, Gert, Irma, Jose, Katia, Lee, Maria, Nate, Ophelia, Philippe, Rena. It's been estimated that Hurricane Maria alone killed 4,645 people during the storm and its aftermath. And this year, the extensive wildfires in California and Greece and the forest fires that raged as far as inside the Arctic Circle as, as this summer turned abnormally wide areas into a tinderbox. And we heard just now from the fire commissioner about the way that the London Fire Brigade has had to deal with so many more grass fires here in London and how much resource of the, um, of the brigade has been taken up with that and also helping colleagues deal with peak fires elsewhere in the UK. The trend is very clear. Climate change is happening and as politicians we owe it to our communities to act. And how many more warnings do we ignore? Do we wait until London has been hit by a devastating extreme weather event that might cost billions, lose lives, and take years to recover from? Assemblymember Twycross is quite rightly including climate change in the risks identified in her Resilience Forum work. Perfect timing. We may have only 12 years before we potentially lose control. The recent study from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, with their recent report showed that at the current rate of warming, average global temperatures could ex exceed one and a half degrees Celsius as early as 2030. That's just 12 years away. And the one and a half degree temperature is like a guardrail between what the global scientific consensus believes we have a chance to cope with, and on the other hand, unimaginable and irreversible social, environmental, and economic devastation. And keeping to one and a half degrees warming is going to be hard, but it is possible. Although only